as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff meat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Stop, look, listen. Here's a warning. Nutrition authorities say breakfast should provide from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. Don't let breakfast be the forgotten meal in your home. According to authorities, you can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk or cream, bread and butter. Tomorrow, enjoy a delicious bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Try this easy-to-serve, economical, deluxe family breakfast tomorrow. Alex Green, alone at one end of the counter in the Gold Nugget Cafe in Dawson City looked at his watch impatiently and scowled. He looked up as the waiter approached. You a stranger around here, mister? I'm just passing mm. through. Going to try a luck prospecting? I guess so. Oh, here comes the man I'm waiting for. Uh. Hello, Alex. How are you? Fine, Bill. Yeah, you're looking good. Better than the last time I saw you in Nome. Maybe prosperity agrees with me. <laughs> I haven't had the chance to find out what it'll do for me. Sorry I was late. I didn't get your message till a few minutes ago. You left your change in the counter, mister. Uh, if you can spare it, this is a good place for it. What do you mean? It's a collection they're taking up for a schoolhouse and books. Seems the kids in town need a place to get educated. Well, they can get along without an education. Well, I guess that's the way about everyone feels. There's no civic spirit. This box is nearly we empty. I can't... come here for a lecture. Now, do you mind? Oh, sorry. Just thought you might be interested. Bill, I asked you to meet me here to find out if you'd be interested in a little proposition I have in mind. If there's money in it, you've got the right party. You know a lot of people in this town, don't you? Practically everyone. Are any of them interested in dogfighting? Sure, but it's illegal. I know, but that's what makes my proposition pay off. I don't quite get it, but I'm interested. I brought a dog with me to Dawson. He's in a big crate in back of the hotel. He's an ugly brute and a good fighter. But that doesn't matter. What do you mean, it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter if he wins or not. Now, here's the idea. You get somebody with a dog to fight mine. I'll bet big money to get the suckers interested. It all has to be done secret, on account of the law. But that'll make it all the more interesting to a lot of the boys. Uh, You'll know who they'll be. I sure do. There are plenty. We have to have the dog fight somewhere away from town where the law can't find us. You collect the bets and hold the stakes. Yeah. Well, what about your dog? You'd have to leave him behind, wouldn't you? Sure, but that's all right. I'll pick up another ugly-looking brute before we hit the next place. Have you done this before? Lenny, I've been working south with the same scheme. <laughs> I guess I bought and left seven or eight dogs. By the time I hit White Horse, I'll be ready to retire and go back to the States. But the law, Alex. What if someone complains about you running out? Look... Everyone who loses money is doing something illegal by betting on a dog fight. How can they complain to the law? Uh, that's right. The men aren't going to chase us themselves. And even if they try it, they'll find out it's dangerous. If they don't report to the law, we can go right to the next town and do it again. Now you're getting the idea. It's foolproof. Of course, it means I'll have to leave town after doing a trick like that. Was there any reason you want to stay? No. Come to think of it, I'd like to get away. Especially if there's easy money to be made. I'm with you, Alex. Shake on it. Right. I thought you'd be interested. Now, look, my dog is back at the Northern Hotel. His name is Killer. 
I got a room there. If anyone wants to see him, take him back there. As soon as you find someone who has a dog that thinks he can lick mine, come up to my room. Number 21, we'll make the arrangements. I see. Now don't worry, Alex. For the next few days, that dog of yours is going to have a lot of people visiting his crate. The following evening, Bill called on Alex in his room at the Northern Hotel to report on his progress. The boys are all excited about the dog fight, Alex. I passed the word around. Good. I noticed a few of them drifting back to the hotel to get a look at the killer. I saw him myself. He's a vicious-looking brute. Did you find anyone who wants to let his dog fight? There's a half-breed who lives down near the river with a dog everyone knows about. It's half-wolf and can lick any two dogs in town. What's this half-breed's name? He's called Karak. His dog's name is Lobo. Has he got any money? Yeah. He has a claim he works in summer, and he's a good trapper. You bet plenty on that dog of his. He likes easy money. Go ahead and change it, then. Right. Let's make it next Thursday night. I found a good place about four miles out of town. It's south of here, not too far from the main trail. We can make an easy getaway. Now, you and I will go down there first and dig a pit for the fight. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was walking down the main street of Dawson with his lead dog, King, beside him when he heard the voice of 12-year-old Kenny Maloney. Sergeant Preston. Hey, Sergeant. Hello there, Ken. I've been trying to catch up with you. Hello, King. <laughs> you care if I walk away with you, Sergeant? I'd be glad if you would. How's the school fund coming along? I've been away. Oh, not so good. The chairman of it, he says nobody wants to give much. Huh? I guess people around here don't care if we learn anything or not. I'll have to start talking up that campaign. Gee, I wish you would. What I wanted to ask you when I saw you today was if you'd seen that big dog in the crate behind the Northern Hotel. A dog? No, I haven't, Kenny. What about him? Well, I know you like dogs just the way I do, and, and I feel sorry for this one. Why? His owner must be awful mean to him. He's full of scars, and he almost tears the crate apart when you go near him. Who owns him? Well, I don't know. Johnny and I saw some men looking at him. We took a shortcut home behind the hotel. We heard them say something about betting that dog could fight. And I'll bet he could, too. He must have been in a million fights. There's the Northern Hotel, Kenny. Let's go back and have a look at that dog. I thought you'd want to see him. I've been looking for you ever since Johnny and I saw him. Oh, there he is. In that big crate with the slats in the front. Quiet. <coughs> Quiet, boy. Just look at the scars on that dog, Sergeant. This must be the dog's name printed here on the top. Killer. Well, that sounds as if he's a fighter, all right. I wonder. What's King barking at? Oh, there's a man coming with some food. Maybe he owns this dog. This your dog? Hmm? Oh, you're a Mountie. Sergeant Preston. Uh, yes, he's my dog. He's, uh, been in some fights. Why, uh, I bought him from a man over in Moosehead. Said he couldn't handle him. He's mean, wants to fight every dog he sees. That's why I have to keep him in that crate. You planning to live in Dawson? Why, uh, no. No, I'm just passing through. I thought I might be able to train this dog, make him into a sled dog. I, I need another one on my team. It'll take some patience, but I think it could be done. Well, if I can't, I'll sell him to someone who has more time to fool with him. He hasn't made friends with you yet, has he? No, but I can handle him. I'm used to dogs. Well, good luck to him. Come on, Kenny. Thanks, Sergeant. Come on now, fellas. Golly, Sergeant. That man looks as mean as his dog. That's what I thought, Kenny. Well, I thought he looked kind of scared when he saw you were a Mountie. He wasn't too pleased to see me, and I don't think he was telling the truth about Killer. His eyes were awful shifty. Killer was afraid of him, too. Did you see the way he cringed back in the crate? Yes. I don't like the looks of it. Kenny, how would you like to be my special deputy for a day or so? Gosh, do, do you really mean it? Yes, I do. Golly, there's nothing I'd rather do. Now, uh, if you hear anything about that dog or that man, tell me about it. I have to leave town again for a few days. Maybe you'll have some information for me by the time I get back. The following day, groups of men gathered in front of the cafes and hotels in Dawson City, speaking in guarded tones. No one paid any attention to Kenny, leaning casually against the wall, his parka hood thrown back at the risk of freezing his ears. Yeah, Pete, the man is from Alaska. You seen his dog? Yep, but I bet Kerak's dog can eat him up in two swallows. Yeah, me, I do not think so. That dog back there is big. He's had lots of fights. My money's on Kira. Yeah, I saw Kerak's dog fight once. The fight didn't last long. My money's hey, wait. on Kira. That's what you say. There's a kid standing right behind me. Hey, you. What are you doing there? What? I said, what are you doing there? Just waiting for a friend of mine. 
Why? Well, wait for him someplace else. Sure. Here he comes now. Hey, Johnny. Now, do you think he heard anything, fellas? No, nah, he wasn't even listening. <laughs> we say nothing but how two dogs can fight. Everyone talks about dogs and fighters. Kenny had heard enough to know that a dog fight was being planned, and he wanted to learn when it would be held. But in no conversation that he overheard did he get that information. On Thursday afternoon, it was getting dark when he crept silently back of the hotel to Killer's Crate. Though the big dog growled at him from the front of the crate where the slats were placed, Kenny crept behind it, concealing himself between the solid back of it and the fence against which it stood. He was cold and cramped, but his patience was rewarded when he heard voices and footsteps approaching. Yeah, there's no one here now, Bill. Yeah. I guess it's safe for me to get the dog team. Now, you stay here and watch. If anyone comes snooping around, you take them away to one of the cafes. Right. Now. I'll be back as soon as I can. We'll put the killer on the sled and take him out to Beaver Hill. What about Karak? The meeting is at Beaver Hill? He knows that the fight's scheduled at 8 o'clock. I told him to be there early. We'll need time to get things ready. How about our supplies? Got everything we need? Most of them are cash behind those rocks near the river. I got the rest on the sled. I'll take them out when we take killer. I'm holding quite a few stakes. Get over $2,000 right now. Don't you think we could leave right oh, away? Oh, there'll be twice that much betting for the fight. I'll get the dog team. We'll put the crane on him. Meanwhile, you stay here and watch. Kenny was trapped. With Bill on guard, he couldn't leave his hiding place behind the crate. And when the crate was moved, he would surely be discovered. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Today we have here a visitor, a lady visitor, of rather remarkable appearance, too. She must be as old as the hills, and yet she seems to have the very spirit of youth. She's dressed up in the most outlandish old-fashioned clothes, and yet she's up to the minute and as modern as the day after tomorrow. In fact, she is our dear old friend, Mother Nature. Thank you, Mr. Michael, as they say on the radio. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Naturally, I'm interested in the raising of food and what people eat. And, of course, that includes breakfast cereal. You're familiar, then, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. I certainly am. For instance, I know that only the choice sun-ripened wheat or rice grains are used. In other words, the premium grains. Yes, and in my way of thinking, that's one of the reasons they have such delicious flavor. Oh, you've actually tasted wheat or rice shot from guns. Land sakes, yes. You can easily see why breakfast of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with plenty of milk or cream and fruit are musts in so many homes. I'm glad, too, also for another reason. And what's that, Mother Nature? I'm glad because they're so nourishing, so good for people. That's right. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So, fellas and girls, and mom and dad, too, take a tip from Mother Nature. Buy a package of both nutritious, delicious kinds. You'll love to eat Quaker puffed wheat one time, Quaker puffed rice the next. These flavor-rich grains are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. So remember to buy those big red and blue Quaker packages. Get the original, crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. They're never sold in bags or bulk. They're shot from guns. Now to continue our story. In spite of the cold, perspiration broke out on Kenny's young face. He had learned about the dogfight. He knew the facts that Sergeant Preston needed, but he couldn't leave his hiding place behind the crate that held the big dog named Killer. Bill was on guard in front of the crate. Then Alex approached with a sled and dog team to carry the crate and the fighting dog to the scene of the battle. Kenny knew he would be seen as soon as the crate was moved. here, Bill? Not a soul. It's dark enough, so we ought to get out of town without people getting too curious. Come on, help me lift this crate to the sled. All right. Shut up, you. All right, Bill. Here we go. This is heavy. As the men lifted the heavy crate, Kenny leaped to his feet and ran. Hey, hey Bill, there's a kid. Put the crate down. It's gone. 
Think you better try and catch him? No, you wouldn't catch him now. He's ducked around the hotel. He was hiding back in that crate. Maybe he was trying to learn something about the fight. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just got scared and hid there when he heard us coming. I don't like it, though. He might blab to the wrong people. Yeah, more than likely, he'll want to see the dog fight. Just the same, I think we better station someone to watch the trail while the fight's going on in case anyone comes who shouldn't. Good idea. I'll get Jim Creedy. I'll have to give him five dollars to do it. We can afford it. Come on, let's get going. It's getting late. Grab that crate and get it loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny waited impatiently at the mounted police headquarters. He knew his mother would be worried about him, but he had to see Sergeant Preston, and the sergeant was due back in town. Soon he heard a dog team turning into the road to the kennels, and he dashed out of the door and ran to Sergeant Preston's side. Sergeant Preston! Sergeant Preston! I thought you'd never get back to town. What's wrong, Kenny? I got the information you wanted about the dog team, I mean. Good for you, son. So my hunch was right. They are planning to have a dog fight. It's tonight, Sergeant. I hid behind the dog crate with the killer in it. it it's going to be tonight at 8 o'clock at Beaver Hill. Oh. They moved the dog crate and saw me, but I got away from them. But but I'm afraid they know I, I heard everything they said. Do you think they'll change their plans now, Sergeant? I doubt it, Kenny. That's why I made you my deputy. They won't think you have anything to do with law. Are you going to stop them, Sergeant? They've already gone out there with the killer. If I prevent the fight, I won't have any evidence against them. I'm afraid I'll have to let them start it and then catch them in the act. I'll go out to Beaver Hill shortly after 8 o'clock. Would, would you care if I went along? Why, all right, son, I'll take you along if you'll promise to stay back and keep out of trouble. Well, thanks, Sergeant. Had you supper? No, I've been waiting for you ever since I heard the men talking. You'd better run home, then, and tell your family about this. Neat. I'll see you in an hour. An oblong pit had been dug behind Beaver Hill. Bright lanterns hung on posts at each corner. Bill, with a box heavy with coins and gold dust, on the ground before him, was busily entering names in a book as he accepted the bets of the men. Killer and Lobo, muzzled and leashed, stood on opposite sides of the pit, held by their owners. Karak, the half-breed owner of Lobo, looked at the killer contemptuously. That dog, him get killed by Lobo quick. You think so, Karak? He looks pretty mean to me. <laughs> him not strong like Lobo. You betting any money on Lobo, Karak? Hmm. Right. Me bet thousand dollar. You did? Well, you must be pretty sure of Lobo. Maybe I better put some more money on it myself. Hey, hey, when's this thing starting? Let's get started, Bill. Everyone places money. Any more bets? We get ready now. Well, I guess we're all set to begin. Unmuzzle your dogs. At a signal from Bill, both men unmuzzled their dogs and threw them into the pit. Two large animals tore into each other. Men gathered close around the pit, their eyes shining with excitement. Come on, Lobo. Make short work of him. Get him, killer. My money's on you. He ain't got a chance. Lobo's going to eat him alive. Come on. Lobo's got his throat that time. The husky's too quick for him. Hey, everybody. Run. Get out of here. Why? Sergeant Preston, the money is coming. He's right behind me. Get out of here if you don't want to get arrested. Jim, he's watching the trail. Run, everybody. Run, boys. I'm getting out of here, too. This way, please. I'm coming. What about the dog? Never mind the dog. Swiftly, the men scattered away from the pit and raced away in all directions. In the excitement, they didn't notice that Bill and Alex had already left. When Sergeant Preston approached, the dogs were fighting without an audience. Stay back there, Kenny. Hold King. I'll stop those dogs. Look out, Sergeant. Don't get bit. Get back, Lobo. Let go, I say. Back, Kenny. Back. Let go, Lobo. Get away. Stop it, I say. Back there. No. Get back. There. I've got Lobo leashed. You want me to time for three, Sergeant? No, Kenny. Don't come near him. I'll do it. Up, Lobo. Get up there. That's the boy. Almost too tired to make it, aren't you? Are the dogs hurt much, Sergeant? Lobo's hurt, but not too badly. Killer, he was getting the worst of it. I'll muzzle him. We'll put him on the sled and take him to the vet at the barracks. Funny everybody was gone when we got here. They must have had a lookout posted somewhere to warn them. Anyway, I know who owns the dogs. Lobo belongs to a man called K-Rack and killer's owners at the hotel. Come on, Kenny. Let's go. One king. <laughs> The following morning, as Sergeant Preston left the police barracks, he was met by Kenny, who was eager to see him. Hello, Sergeant. Well, Kenny, you're up early this morning. I came to find out whether our job was done. Did you arrest the owners of the dogs? I found k all right, but Alex Green has disappeared. Disappeared? Checked out of the hotel yesterday. k told us the whole story. Bill Carney helped Alex, but I can't find him in town either. That must have been Bill who was talking to him when I was hiding behind the killer's crate. Did you hear anything else, Kenny, besides where the fight was to be held? I, I was pretty scared. But it seems to me they said something about supplies. Supplies? I don't know what they meant, 
Alex said something about having supplies cached under a pile of rocks near the river. Oh. I didn't think it had anything to do with the fight, or I'd have told you. I think it has a great deal to do with the fight. The man called Bill was the one who held all the money that was bet. They must have taken the dog team and left during the confusion. You mean they stole all the money? Yes, Kenny. Fortunately, it hasn't snowed. I may be able to pick up their trail. Will you take me, Sergeant? Remember, I'm your deputy. Not this time, Kenny. These men are dangerous, and it may mean a long chase. King and I'll have to handle this alone. It was not difficult for Sergeant Preston to pick up the trail of the dog team driven by Alex and Bill. It was clear and well-defined in the snow and led down the river to the south. It was when it joined the well-packed main trail that the sergeant had to depend on King. The great dog had got the scent of the man his master was after, and he led the team at a terrific pace in their pursuit. On King! On! Bill and Alex kept going at a steady pace towards Selkirk. Though they were sure they would not be followed, Alex was cautious, and they reached the summit of a high hill on the second day. <laughs> Alex took out his binoculars to scan the trail behind them. I can get a good look from here. May as well play safe. What? What's wrong, Alex? There's a big dog team coming fast. That man, it looks Take like... those glasses. Here. Alex, it's Sergeant Preston. Uh, you can't see his face well it's enough. It's his lead dog I recognize. That's King. Let's go. Well, our team is no match for that one. Now, listen. You take the sled and dogs and keep going. I'll take the gold and head for the woods and meet you in Selkirk next month. I'll send you enough money for your farm. Oh, no, you don't. You go off for that money, I'll never see you again. I'm not taking the blame We haven't time to argue. Oh, oh. That does it. Now to get you on the sled. By the time you come to, we'll be miles apart. There. I'll take the money. On you, husband! Hush! 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 The sled carrying Bill's unconscious figure went careening down the hill, and Alex, carrying the box of money under his arm, headed off the trail for the woods at the side. A short time later, Sergeant Preston topped the hill. From below on the trail, he could see the dog team and sled, but King slowed the team. Okay. What's wrong, boy? The big dog barked as he sniffed the tracks of Alex. Then Sergeant Preston understood. So one of them went on alone... I better have a look at that sled down there through my binoculars. Mm-hmm. Man lying on it, and the team's slowing down. I guess we can get him later, King. You and I are going after the man in the woods. Sergeant Preston, with King beside him, followed the tracks of Alex. They led to a deeply wooded spot at the base of the hill. Quietly, he and King entered the shadowed forest of fir and pine trees. Then suddenly, from a thicket up ahead, a shot rang out. A bullet whizzed past the Mountie's head. Sergeant Preston's gun answered as he dropped behind a fallen log, King crouching beside him. Shots chipped bark off the log above his head. Then Preston whispered to King. We want you to take him alive, boy. Now it's up to you to help me. Circle him, fella. Go on, King. Circle him, boy. The big dog looked at the Mountie's circling gesture. He had done this before and knew that he had to reach the man who was firing the shots without going into the line of fire. While Sergeant Preston shot rapidly into the thicket to make Alex take cover, King raced off to the right into the trees. The Mountie had stopped firing when King crept toward the thicket, where a gun blazed at the log behind which his master lay. The dog came rapidly but silently until he was close to Alex. And then he sprang. Help! Help me! Oh, get away! Get off! Hold him, King! I'm good. Good work, fella. No, take him away! Take him off! I'll take this gun of yours first. All right, King. Back, fella. Get up, Alex. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. You'd never have got me if it hadn't been for this dog. You should have given yourself up, Alex. The penalty for holding a dog fight and for robbery isn't half as severe as the penalty for attempted murder. I'll let you carry that box of money. I'll start back up the hill. I'll go down and pick up Bill just as soon as we get back to my team. A large crowd of men had assembled in the big room at Mounted Police Headquarters. As Sergeant Preston took his place on the platform at the end of the room, there were murmurs in the crowd. Men, I spread the word around for you to be here because I have some news that might interest you. Yesterday, I brought in two criminals, Bill Carney and Alex Green, who were running away with the money that had been wagered on a dogfight. Now, some of this money may belong to certain people here, and perhaps you'd like to claim it. I must warn you first that if you do, I'll have to arrest you, because, as you know, dog fights are illegal, and your fine will be very heavy. But if you care to claim it, it's your privilege. 
To anyone here who wants his money? Well, it looks as if no one here attended that dogfight. I have a suggestion to make. As long as no one seems to want to claim the money, I suggest we give it to the school fund. Anyone object? Very well, then. That's what we'll do with the money. I have a friend here, young Kenny Maloney, whose father is chairman of the committee. Here, Kenny. Take this cash to your father. Oh, gosh. Tell him it's enough to build a school and buy some books. Yes, sir. The unknown contributors will feel proud when they look at the school. There's one thing more, Sergeant Preston. Yes, Kenny. I was talking to the veterinary. He said the killer's really a fine dog. All he needs is a good master. I, I'd sure like to have that dog if you think it will be all right. That's a fine idea, Kenny. The owner of the dog's in jail. He's in no position to object if you adopt the dog. Now, gentlemen, we can adjourn. I think there's no question that this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Fellas and girls, don't miss out on all the fun. Build the new Quaker model farm. Yes, get 36 detailed scale models of farm buildings, farm animals, and farm equipment. These exciting models are yours at no extra cost. You get them on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are eight different packages in all. And you get as many as six models to a single package. Models like Farmhouse Itself, Big Red Barn with Sliding Door, Tractor, Shetland Pony, and many, many others. Just remember, you get these exciting models at no extra cost on packages of swell-tasting Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday... When Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the remittance man. When Gerald Fanhope came to the Yukon, I was charged with his safety and welfare. He had a way of getting into trouble, and to make my task more difficult, he didn't want protection. The situation became critical when Crooks captured Gerald and had a ransom demand to his titled father in England. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. You boys or girls will certainly want to feed your dog kennel ration. And your dog will really eat up kennel ration fast. It's made with choice cuts of lean red meat, U.S. government-inspected horse meat. This famous dog food contains vital minerals and all known dog health vitamins your dog needs. Tell mom to start with kennel ration right away. See how happy your dog is when he gets this food he loves. Have mom get kennel ration. First in canned dog food. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.